Good day, everybody. This is Chris with The Ancient Scholar, and uh, today what I'd like to talk about is I'd like to get into something known as crystal field theory. Now, crystal field theory is a theory that was uh, uh, developed in the 1930s by um, a couple of different physicists. Uh, one that I remember in particular is, is Hans Beth, um, and it was kind of one of the first uh, theories that kind of took quantum mechanics into consideration um, and, and it really it was aimed at um, describing the, the unique characteristics of the transition metals. Um, there are other theories that are actually better and have better predictions in crystal field theory, uh, in particular something known as ligand field theory, um, which is a, a full-on quantum mechanical theory. It's very robust, makes very good predictions, but it is a very complex theory, and it's just much easier to start at crystal field theory. And crystal field theory does make some really good predictions, um, but it, it, it can fall short in a lot, of, a lot of situations. But be that it as it may, I think it's a really good starting place, so we're going to start at crystal field theory. Uh, so it, it deals with the um, transition metals, the metals in the center of a periodic table of elements. And really, to be a transition metal, um, you have to have partially filled, okay, right here, partially filled d orbitals. That's really what makes a transition metal. Um, there are some elements, such as uh, zinc, for example, um, and copper, that um, may not actually act like a transition metal because um, well, zinc, for example, has a completely filled has com uh, completely filled d orbitals. Um, however, the the metals, the transition metals, are really good at having different what we call oxidation states. And an oxidation state in um, heavy metal chem or in transition metal chemistry, an oxidation state means um, it's basically um, how many electrons have been taken away. Um, from these metals. So these metals are ionized. We often look at them as ions, or they are ionized. And if you remember, that's really what makes a metal metal. If a metal, if an element is, is, is wants to give up um, electrons, um, that makes it a metal. That's one of the characteristics of a metal. And the transition metals are um, no different. So um, if I, for example, if I have iron, and um, iron um, or Fe loses an electron, okay, so Fe minus 1, we would say that iron has an oxidation state of 1 um, because it's lost an electron. Um, if I have iron and it is a negative, a, 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 oh, excuse me, a plus 1 since it's lost an electron, excuse me, a plus 2, we would just say that it has an oxidation state of 2. And occasionally, you'll even see this in chemical formulas where you may see something like Fe2Cl, um, um, iron 2 chloride. And that is to tell you that we are dealing with the um, iron in the, in a, it has a, uh, a, an oxidation state of 2 or the plus 2 ion. Okay, so that's what we're that's what we're talking about with oxidation states, at least in terms of heavy metal chemistry. There's a there's a more general uh, definition of oxidation state um, that I'm really not going to hit on here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and just provide the foundation for crystal field theory. And I, I thought what I'd do is I'd just take a look at something we all know, and that's iron. And here's the electronic configuration of iron, um, going all the way to argon. Um, 3d6 4s2 um, so if we fill and I kind of have an energy level diagram this is um, the first second third and fourth period and then I have the the orbitals now in a hydrogen atom or a one electron atom all of the orbitals if for each um, energy level or each shell would be degenerate they'd have the same energy levels um, but we know that um, in polyelectronic um, atoms where I have more than one electron, the, the energies differ between the different orbitals. So, and n equals one, I only have one orbital, so I'll go ahead and populate that with electrons, those, uh, spin up, spin down. And then equals two, s, um, s orbitals tend to have lower energy than p orbitals, so we'll fill the s orbital up first, and then we'll go ahead 
and we'll fill up the p orbital uh, using Hund's rule and the Aufbau principle. Okay, and then I get to my third um, energy level. All right, and we'll do that, and then we'll fill up our p orbitals as well. All right. Okay, and then remember. Um, what happens is we actually um, skip over the d orbitals and we fill up the uh, 4s orbital, okay? And then we kind of and then what happens is once I go past that 20 electrons, so once I go past calcium, um, then the the energy level of the d drops um, below the s, um, and we end up getting here um, this configuration here, which is kind of a <clears throat> kind of a funny little thing that happens. <clears throat> that I talked about in some earlier videos. Okay, so we got 4s2 and then 3d6. So we'll fill our d orbitals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so this is the um, electron configuration of iron. Um, so what happens is iron is really good at um, getting rid of electrons. It has a very, what we call, low electronegativity. And typically what happens is... Um, when we ionize these, the 4s electron, because it has the lowest energy, okay, at least in, in terms of transition metals, 4s has lowest energy, um, we will lose electrons from the 4s orbital first. So, for example, um, Fe plus 1, so iron with an oxidation state of 1 is going to lose one of those electrons, okay, like that, and then iron... 2 Fe plus 2 with oxidation state of plus 2 is going to have both of its s electrons missing and then what happens well in in iron 2 what happens is i don't have uh, electrons in the fourth energy level anymore right if i don't have electrons in the fourth energy level then what becomes the most relevant orbitals what becomes the valence shell well my valence shell is now the third energy level or the third period and the d orbitals have the highest energy in the um, third shell so the d orbitals are now the valence are now the valence so what you will see in um, a lot of the uh, crystal field field theory is you'll actually see the plus two ion for a lot of these metals is going to be a very important ion because um, in a lot of cases, the plus two ion means, or the metal with a uh, plus two oxidation state means that I've gotten rid of both of the s electrons, and now that I'm deal, and now I'm actually dealing with the d orbitals, and this is where the interesting um, chemistry happens um, with these transition metals because um, this becomes the valence shell. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off here because now that I've, I've kind of laid the foundation for what's to come and, and why um, the loss of electrons is important and how the d orbitals um, become important in transition metals, I'm going to cut it off now and then we'll start talking about what is actually going on with these d orbitals in crystal field theory. Okay, guys, hopefully that made sense. And uh, as always, thanks for hanging in there.